Hey hey everybody, this is Larry, this is day 3 of the December League Code Day Challenge. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join me on Discord, let me know what you think about today's poem. Uh, if you're new to the channel, um, usually I explain my thought process from beginning to end, uh, and I record everything live, so I might get to the actual solution a little bit slow. Feel free to watch this on faster speed or just skip ahead, uh, and let me know what you think, because um, it's different from how usually other people do it. Today's problem is increasing order search tree. Okay, so basically, okay, you want to convert it to essentially a linked list from a, a search tree. Um, okay. Mm. I think the question is whether, hmm. In an, uh, uh, so I mean, I think conceptually in terms of understanding, uh, it should be okay, and it's only 100 anyway. Um, so for these problems, the tricky part is just trying to figure out the invariance of a problem. Uh, and an invariant is something that doesn't change as things change, right? Um, other things change, obviously. Uh, and I know that sounds vague, but what those things are depending on the problem. Uh, and to be honest, uh, if I was doing a contest or something like that, I might be tempted to, you know, just create this... Um, create a second copy and then just like, you know, do it regular in order and then just um, do it that way. And you could do that in like five lines of code. Uh, I don't know if that would have to do it in place. It doesn't mention anything about the space complexity. And also given that it's a hundred node, in theory, I probably wouldn't care. Um, yeah. But, but for now, I am going to try to upsolve it uh, by trying to use uh, do everything in place, in constant space, um, or constant extra space minus in place, which a lot of times I um, I will complain about doing things in place because it's just so artificial. But for for something like this, maybe it's okay. Um, yeah. So basically, the idea here is that given a binary search tree, you want to give another a linked list, essentially, but a, a tree in order. So then the invariant is that we want to get the smallest value. And... And get, to get the smallest value in a binary search tree, um, it's just you do an in order traversal, right? So let's kind of let's start doing that, and then we'll try to figure out how we do the actual connections. Because I think this is, um, and this is what experience gets me is that it just comes down to case analysis, and you have to be really careful. I don't think conceptually there's anything hard once you are familiar with in order traversals and and just linked lists and mm, trees in general uh, in terms of algorithm uh, in terms of because you know you could you could draw pretty pictures and just like change the pointers right but of course the implementation is going to be the tricky part for this problem so uh, so yeah let's kind of walk through it together um, okay so let's say we have you know if node is none we just return because that means the node is done maybe maybe we may have to return something uh, but for now we'll return no nothing uh, so then we we just do in order of node left, uh, do something with process node uh, in order of node right, right? Okay. So what do we want to do though? So that is the environment that we try to get. So we want to get. So what does this? What should this function return? Um, and I think something that I get stuck on sometimes is that. Um, I try to make this only return one thing when it could maybe return multiple things. Um, but yeah, so basically we want this to return. Hmm. We want, so we want in order to return the biggest element because basically, okay. So maybe I would have to rewrite this a little bit, but basically we want from the left side, we want this to return the the biggest element from your left side. You connect that to your current node, and then you want to get the smallest element from your from your right side, and then connect that right. So, so that means that we want to return two things. One is the uh, smallest element, and one is the biggest element. So we can do that. Um, we might not use both of them, but we can write our code in such that way. Um, and I, and I, right now, I'm just thinking about whether I, I want to split into two different functions. 
Um, but the problem with two different functions is that if you're not careful, this would become n squared instead of O of n. Um, but I know that in this case, it doesn't really matter because n is 100. But in terms of upsolving, that's what I'm thinking about. So, okay, let's actually change this or be clear with this definition of this in order. Okay, this function, we, uh, this method maybe, returns um, the leftmost, which is, of course, the, the smallest element, uh, and the rightmost, the largest element. Oops, let me just put this on a different line. Uh, in the subtree, okay? So then now here, we, if none is, if node is none, then we could just return none, none. Uh, here, then we can return, what we want is left, um, so we, from the left, we want, what we do is say, we want the biggest, right? So left, biggest naming is tough for me still so you know i hope you okay and we could ignore the smallest i think um we might not and if that's not the case then you know we'll change it right smallest uh is in order to know the right and then now <clears throat> uh actually no we do need the left smallest just because we need to return that later. I mean, we actually might not use it, I think, to be honest, but no, we might actually. So we'll see. Uh, but and let's just think it to largest instead of biggest because I think that's more grammatically correct. So then process, no, what, what is there to process, right? Well, now, now we want the left largest uh, to point uh, right, right? They want the right? Yeah, only right child. Uh, right to this node. So left largest um, dot right is equal to node. And then node dot right is equal to right largest, right? Uh, and this will, of course, have to be afterwards, otherwise. Um, uh, we don't get the answer from this, but we might have to think of, I might have to think about whether that messes up the answer, to be honest. So we'll see. Um, okay. Um, hmm. And then now we return the left smallest, which is the smallest of the sub node, and then the right largest from here. Uh, also, I, I messed up, I think. So, so hang on. This should be right smallest, of course. Um, I think this should be close. I, I'm not confident about it, to be honest, but this is why I want to, um, want to want some test cases to help me with the visualization. Sometimes I draw it out, um, but you know, this may help me, uh, you know, this will help me kind of just visualize it in general. Uh, and of course, in this case, actually, I just forgot some stuff, which is um, keeping in mind that all of these could be none. So, hmm. Which one of these can be none? Okay, well, if, if this, th these have to both be at least one element or they're none. So we could just check if la left largest dot right is none or is not none. But now I think we have some possible, um, possible, how do you say this? Um, possible um, hanging things. So, so we'll kind of see. Uh, and this doesn't have to be right. And what I mean by that is that um, it, it might we know we not complete all the list, but this is where, uh, to be honest, this is really tricky to be careful. You may draw a visualization. Uh, the way that I try to show it here is by running the code so that we could visualize it together. Uh, clearly, the answer is wrong, but. Oh, and I don't change anything. That's why. Um, hmm. That is. Oh, we don't change anything because we don't ever return anything useful. Um, because th if this is none, then we don't return it, right? So, um, if le left smallest, oops, if left smallest is none, then we set this to uh, node. If right largest is none then we set right largest 
eager to know. Um, so we should definitely be closer to the truth. But and how am I able to visualize? It's just because of years of experience and a lot of practice in debugging how I think. Right. So you may take a while debugging, and I would recommend you know doing print statements or just writing a debugger on your local machine. Uh, okay. So yeah, we found a psycho. That's not great, obviously. Um, so that's not good visualization, but hmm. Oh, um, the the reason is because we don't get rid of nodes. Oh, sorry, we don't get rid of the links. So basically, hmm. Oh yeah. Uh, well, actually, we could just probably do something like dot left is equal to none. Uh, no dot left is equal to none. We definitely don't do that. Let's see if that gets us closer. Uh, there is a lot of trial and error because, like I said, it's going to be a lot of case uh, com um, case analysis. So it's going to be a little bit sketch. Um, we do get rid of too much. We get rid of the left. Uh, so what's 517? Uh, oh, yeah. So there's a visualization here. We get rid of the left for some reason. So that's not great. Oh, no, no. This is. I think this is actually okay. Um, but I am not handling this correctly, which is that um, instead of returning the root, we actually want to start from the smallest element, right? So the smallest. So yeah, so I, I am forgetting a lot of things, so I apologize. Uh, this, but you do get to see me live and you get to see my thought process as I debug them. So hopefully that helps. Um, yeah, uh, this still actually looks good, but I'm not confident still because, well, Look, I was wrong for like five of those test cases, so we kind of built this one by one. Um, and even though I am a little bit confident, but I'm still not 100% confident. Um, this has to be a binary search tree, so... Wait, is this a binary search tree? Yeah, uh, oh, right. Um, and then maybe just uh, do, do, do. Because yeah, the, the reason why this was wrong is because we want to st uh, start the link this at the smallest and not at the root. Uh, it's just that it's um it's a force of habit that um yeah it's a force of habit that you know I usually in a lot of other problems you just want to return the root. So uh, cool. Uh, so we did find a wrong answer. Why is this wrong? Is the tree correct? Uh, yeah, the tree is correct. So it is good that that's why we test some more. Um, the smallest should be one. So here I am just wa walking through the code. The, the right is none. So the right is going to be, the right largest is going to be the node. Um, this is going to be none. So, oh, I don't set the node to left is equal to none if we, um, yeah, because uh, that is a tricky nuance. And now I have to, I'm trying to think about it um, because we have to process the current nodes left. And when we do an order, we should process everyone's left. So it should be okay. But, hmm. but this is why we test. And that's why now I'm a little bit, uh, I want to check more cases. Let's just say five, uh, four, three. Okay, so that looks okay. Uh, I'm going to give a submit. Usually, I would, um, if I'm on an interview or something like that, I might do more testing because I'm still not 100% confident. But uh, but just in the interest of time, uh, I'm just going to give and then see if I get any test cases. Okay, accepted. Cool. Um, so what is the complexity of this, right? So it's going to be O of N because for each node, we only call this function at most once. And so for every node, we call it once. So it's going to be O of N because this only takes O of one time. Assuming that, you know, each of these is going to be all one. Um, yeah, and that's pretty much it. I think it's just a lot of bookkeeping. Uh, and when I say bookkeeping, I mean just keeping track of where every node is. And if it helps, I would recommend, you know, taking a piece of paper and just draw it out and make sure you get all the cases right. Uh, here, I, if, if you watch me, I actually visualize by uh, looking through the code and seeing what my code does. Uh, to be honest, we're not super always recommended. It takes sometimes it does go wrong spectacularly and takes a long time. But and and you know it takes a lot of uh, experience to both know the code, which obviously you know is is 
you know, like you just know the code and see what it does. But two is also just know how you write code, right? Like sometimes some, like some people just mix the same mistakes all the time. Uh, like me, I, I make certain type of mistake all the time. So I definitely like know what to look for, right? So that's why I'm able to debug faster. And that, that's why I always advocate that when you um, have issues with the right answer, try debugging it yourself and see where your logic was wrong, right? For example, for me, like I had a, a loop logic here and I'm like, huh, you know, this is a, and you know, I try to distill the test cases to be as small as possible. So that when I reproduce, I'm like, oh, this is wrong, but why is this wrong for, for just one node? Oh, because we never said left if this is, because this has no relevance to this is uh, this way. So these are the, some examples that I would do. But yeah, that's all I have for this problem. Let me know what you think. It's a, I mean, I think in theory, the algorithm is not hard, but it is a lot of implementation possible mistakes. Uh, and you can tell by just the number of if statements I have. And, the, and there's a lot of like, asymmetry that's a little bit weird um but yeah okay cool that's all i have for this problem let me know what you think uh and i will see y'all tomorrow bye bye